Newton's third law says for every action there is an equal but opposite reaction. Okay? And Newton's third law explains why we don't have to do Newton's law of universal gravitation multiple times. So we're going to do Newton's law of universal gravitation. Newton's law of universal universal gravitation. Newton's law of universal gravitation. I will not make you write that, I promise. Okay? Other than in your notes. Okay? But like on problems and stuff, you won't have to write it. But if I ask you about Newton's law of universal gravitation, you will have to know this. Again, you don't have to memorize the formulas at this level of the class. All you have to do is be able to select it. So, we're going to have the force of gravity, because it's Newton's law of universal gravitation. So, the force of gravity between any two objects in the universe is equal to big G times the mass of the first object times the mass of the second object divided by the radius between the two objects squared. That's the first impressive looking formula we've had in physics class. But it's just an impressive looking formula. It's really not all that hard. So let me label these things so that you can see what they are. Big G is a constant. What is a constant? It's a value that doesn't change. And in a mathematical formula, a constant is a number that makes the, makes the equation equal. Okay, It modifies the expression. And I'm going to explain this in just a minute. But this is just a constant. It's the universal gravitational constant. Okay, my students like to call it Big G, okay, because it's a capital G. The funny thing is that that number, okay, and this number never changes, that's why it's a constant, is pathetically small. It's ridiculously small. It's so small that in any other context we wouldn't care about it. It's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. And then it's got some crazy units that we're not even going to worry about. So, no, it's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. Meaning it's really, 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 really crazy small. So, if I were going to write it like in normal hand, it would be point, and then I got to write how many zeros? Well, I got to write 10 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then 6, 6, 7. So that's a really, 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 really small number. But it's just a number. That's it. That's all it is. Okay? Now, another way to write this formula so it doesn't look as impressive or intimidating, as some people would put it, is that the force of gravity, that's just a lowercase g saying gravity, is equal to g times mass 1 times mass 2, all divided by radius squared. That's still the same formula. The big G in this case is just on the top. Because mathematically, that's exactly the same. Whether you make a big G over to the side, or you write the big G on the top, it's all the same. There is no difference. This is hard for students to rearrange algebraically because you don't know what to do. That's at least been my experience. So when we write it like this, it makes it a little bit easier to rearrange. It's still not particularly easy, but we'll get there, don't worry. And what I probably will do is rearrange that for you so all you have to do is select it. All right, so this is the formula. Now, this mass here is any old mass. It doesn't matter what the mass is. It's just the mass of one thing. All right? 
So I'm going to give you an example. Okay? The force of gravity, right? That's how attractive things are, right? It's an attractive force, the force of gravity. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out just how exactly attractive I am. Okay? Because I want to see how attractive I am. Right? So let's find out. Let's see how attractive I am. All right. Now, so this mass, we're going to call mass one the mass of Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin's mass. Mass of Mr. Martin. Okay? And I'm going to find, well, I, I can't help it. That's what my mom named me. All right. So I have Mr. Martin's mass, right? And then I'm going to pick on Gabriel for a second, okay? So we're going to find out how attractive I am to Gabriel, okay? Probably not. Probably not that attractive, but let's find out anyways. By the way, we can find out how attractive any one of you are to anybody else in the room. Because all of you are attracted to everybody else inside the room gravitationally, okay? <laughs> Now, incidentally, this law does not explain why when a boy passes a girl in the hallway, they get stuck together. Okay? People that are stuck together out in the hallway are not stuck together by the force of gravity. And I can prove that mathematically in just a moment. But for right now, we're going to find out how attractive I am to Gabriel. All right? So, we have the mass of Mr. Martin, and then we have Gabriel's mass, the mass of Gabriel. All right? So let's plug some numbers in. And the R, what is the R? Well, R stands for radius, but it's really a distance. This is distance. That's distance between objects. Hey, Kelsey. So, if I were going to figure out what force is between Gabriel and I, then we're going to put in the numbers down here. So, the force of gravity between, between Gabriel and I, well, we have to have big G, that's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. That's not very big. And then we're going to take the mass of Mr. Martin. My mass, uh, let's see here, I'm going to take my weight which this morning I weighed in at a hefty 150 pounds because of all the sweets I ate. So 150 divided by 2.2. So I am 68 kilograms. Gabriel, how much do you weigh? 140. So 140 divided by 2.2. You are 63.6 kilograms. Let's just go with 64. 64 kilograms for Gabriel. And then we're going to divide that by the distance between Gabriel and I. And I'm going to say that that's what? How far do you think that is, Gabriel, between you and I? You can go, what, maybe two meters? You think that's about two meter sticks between you and I? About that? We'll go with two meters. So that's two squared. Because remember, it's FG equals big G times M1 times M2 divided by radius squared. So now it's just putting numbers in, right? So we put this in the calculator. Because it's too early in the morning to do math. So now we're going to do 6.67 second E. Remember, we want to do scientific notation. Negative 11 times my mass. My mass is 68 kilograms. Times Gabriel's mass, which is 64 kilograms. I'm going to hit the enter key, and that gives me a number, and now I'm going to divide that by the distance squared. So divided by 2 squared. And the number I get is ridiculously small. If I put that in scientific notation, because that's too small for me to write, I'm going to get this number. The force of gravity between Gabriel and I is 7.26 times 10 to negative 8th newtons. Now, that is not even enough force 
to cause a grain of sand, okay, to blow in any amount of wind. Whatever force you can think of, the least amount of force that you can possibly imagine, that force is way smaller than that. Okay? You can't even imagine how small that force is. Still too small. Still, still too small. I tell you what, why don't we look up for next time what the mass of a single grain of sand is, and we'll just call it normal, regular play sand, right? And then we'll figure out what the weight of that one piece of grain of sand is. And I bet you it's probably a hundred to a thousand times more than the force of gravity between Gabriel and I. Maybe even more than a thousand times. Hey, that's a good question. Boy, he's like, I paid you to ask that question. Yeah, as a matter of fact, look, let's talk about how the force is, is actually affected, right? We already know that Gabriel's not very attracted to me. And because of that one video, and that's okay, I'm all right. I'm married, I don't care, right? I don't care how I attract her by him. It's just a fact, though. I am attracted to him and he's attracted to me, just not much, all right? Now, next question for you, though. Next question for you is how is that force affected, right? How is that a force affected? That was one of the questions that was asked. So well, let's talk about it. Well, we have, let's think about this, all right? If I have two objects that are next to each other, right? And they're both being attracted. So the force of attraction between them. Which do you think would be, which do you think would make it harder for them to attract each other? If I move them closer together or move them further apart? Which would decrease the amount of attractiveness? Further apart. The further apart I move two objects, the less attractive they are. This is why long distance relationships never work out. That's a joke, okay? That actually has nothing to do with gravity, but it still applies, right? The further away you are, the less attractive you are, okay? Pluto is, has a much smaller gravitational force on the sun than the Earth has on the sun for a variety of reasons, but mostly because of distance. The further I move away from an object, the less that object pulls on me, and that makes sense. Intuitively, it makes sense. I have a relationship that distance is inversely related to force. Okay? This little sign right there, it means related to. Okay? Proportionate. It doesn't mean equal. It means that if something happens to this R, then something else happens to the F. They are related to each other but not equal to each other, all right? If R gets larger, if the distance gets larger, what happens to the force? It decreases. We know that to be true, and that's why R is, this. they're inversely related, okay? But it turns out mathematically, if we do the math and we make the measurements, what we find out is that it's not inversely related, it's inversely related to the exponent of R. Okay, it's what's known as the inverse square. So force is inversely related to the square of distance. Because you have to take the R and square it in order to figure out how much force is decreased by. That's the hardest part. Okay? Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation, a nickname, it's known as the inverse square law. Inverse square law. We're not done yet, folks. 
Now, let's talk about how that relates to each other. So, with the inverse square law, see, I can make my paper longer. Uh, it's not working out. With our inverse square law, we have this. If force is inversely related to the square of distance, if I double R, okay, so if I double R, so now I have force is equal to 2R. Both of those things are squared. Pay attention. This is the hard part. This is the part where students get lost. Okay? If I double the distance between two objects, so they were some distance between each other, that distance being R. But now I make the R... Twice as big. I know just through logic that because they're further away, the force is going to go down. I know that. The further away something is, the harder it is for me to attract it. Okay? But I want to figure out by how much exactly. If I double R mathematically, right? If I have to square that, if I square the two, what number do I get? I get 4. Okay? So that's the same thing as saying this. Is if I take F by putting a 2 here, I made this side go down by 4. So if I make this side go down by 4, then I have to make force go down by 4 as well. Because it's 2 squared. It's not just 2. My force didn't get cut in half. My force got cut in half by 2 squared, which is 4. What if I, dec or I increase my radius by 3? So now it was 3R. Can you move it up? Yes. What if now I made it 3 times further away? Then what would force decrease by? What's 3 squared? It's 9. Okay? So it's not 3 times 2. It's 3 times 3 because it's squaring it. And so the force would decrease by a factor of 9, not G. If it were 4 times, so if I increase the radius by 4R, then what would the force go down by? It would go down by 16. Okay? Don't make it difficult. It's not meant to be. Here's the part that gets really confusing. Okay? What if... What if... I got the objects closer together? If I put the objects closer together, if I stood closer to Gabriel, right? If I cut the distance in half, how much more force would there be? We know the force is going to go up because now I'm closer to him. But by how much? Well, here I have force. I have 1 over R squared, right? But now I've cut the force in half. So what's 1 half squared? Well, from your math class, hopefully they taught you that 1 half squared is equal to 1 quarter. So if you take force is 1 quarter, uh-huh. If you divide something by a quarter, what's that the same thing as? Well, that's the same thing as multiplying times the inverse of a quarter. 